Meghan Markle has announced she is thrilled about her return to the entertainment industry, revealing that she and Harry hopes to make content that would make audiences feel a sense of community. Taking to the red carpet at Variety's Power of Women event in LA, the former Suits actress teased exciting new projects in the pipeline and set tongues wagging about a Hollywood comeback after posing with two big Tinseltown hotshots. The former actress said she is really proud of what Archwell Productions had created thus far, including Netflix docuseries Harry and Meghan and her archetypes podcast for Spotify. Uh, Harry and Meghan for the Netflix docuseries was fantastic, okay? It was, it was, it was good, I thought it was entertaining. Mm. Um, mm. And it's the most successful docu-series of all time on Netflix. It's also the most expensive of, of all time because that's basically all they produced and then the Invictus Games documentary. But she's been a producer for ages. This, is, this isn't new. She did a Lead to Live or Live to Lead docu-series. Um, and she's been looking on the quiet for productions, for new uh, avenues for a while. But the problem she's been having, I'm told, mm. is that the stuff she's been bringing to the table, Netflix have been saying, no, no, that's, that's not what we were after. We want something, something gritty, something better. Essentially, and I hate to say this because I'm a big fan of Meghan and Harry, they're only really getting going to get eyes on screen when they are slagging off the royal family. Becca, yeah. tell me I'm wrong. I think you are wrong. Right? Isn't she a great name to have a, kind of assigned to any project just because no, of the amount really. of publicity she gets? I no. mean, I, 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 is everything is it, is she does, good publicity, she gets though. To, but is, isn't the old thing good any publicity. good publicity? Well, no, publicity. but the thing is, you would here's the thing, the, Kim Kardashian is a certain is type of publicity. If, you were, if you're trying to give the Catholic Church publicity, you don't want Kim Kardashian in her comically proportioned derriere <laughs> as the kind of any, any kind of publicity. They could give it a go. I mean, no, it, it's true. Like, you know, not all publicity is good publicity. I, I struggle to gauge where their heads are at because when Megan uh, joined the royal family, she was very adamant that she, you know, public service was something she was passionate about. She wanted to to do, um, you know, charity work and all of that. And she something still that does she'd done, charity work. Yeah, but there's something she'd done even before meeting Harry, and that's one of the things that they clicked on. And now, after leaving um, in, in the most bombastic fashion and making this transition to God knows what, they're, they're talking about producing stuff that will give people a sense of community. And I just, I can't help but feel like it's going to be sanctimonious and preachy, like what we've come to expect from the couple. <laughs> but that's, and the, I think that's not even, the problem with the stuff disconnect. that they produce. But it's not even sanctimonious and preachy. She always talks about this community and about other people and about compassion. And then it's all about herself and it's all about them. It's Ooh. always about Megan. Exactly, but this is the thing. And, and I that's think, actually I what I people struggle. want. They want to see... Yeah, Megan and stop, Harry, they stop want with the gloss. Stuff. Stop with the gloss and dressing it up as like useful to you and interesting to you and community, yeah, just whatever. Just be honest just, and say, just say, I'm making another I'm going to say, listen, documentary so about me. Because okay. content, be content, is, content is king or queen. Yeah. Fine. We're all fascinated by the ridiculous lives. We're all fascinated yeah. by the bile that they're so going to spill say, over, whichever. Just what it's about. And just say, you know, if they had a series, Megan slags off X, Y, Z next yeah. time, fine. And then It'll why Megan left the royal family? Yes. Why Megan and Harry have gone abroad, but Absolutely. they want to come back, but they won't, don't want to come back. Their privacy worldwide tour. You know, just but be honest. But stop trying to pretend <laughs> that you're one of us. You're not one of us. You live in a God knows how many million dollar or mansion. About climate you have change hot and cold you running plan. people. You, you don't care about climate change, otherwise you wouldn't use the private jets. Yeah. You don't care about uh, all the stuff that you say you do, otherwise you, you wouldn't live the life that you do, lead. And you wouldn't have so many stuff who lead through the revolving door. It's just like, shut okay, up. Okay, James, so, James, sorry. take a breather. Get your breath back. Let, <laughs> let, let me just I move on slightly. Need to. Author Omid Scobie has furiously denied that Ugh. his controversial new book, Endgame, is solely about Harry and Meghan. He posted on X, claiming the biography focuses on the broader state of the royal family and covers a more comprehensive narrative beyond the Sussexes. He also said he's not Meg's pal, and Madura had nothing to do with Endgame. Mm. World experts fear the book's publication is threatening a potential in relations between the king and his youngest son. Well, one thing here, Omid Scobie, you say you're not Meg's pal and that Harry and Meghan had nothing to do with Endgame, but you also said that Harry and Meghan had nothing to do with your first book, mm -hmm. and then it was discovered in court that actually Meghan had been giving him information, there right? There was a bit of cooperation there. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cooperation. Just a little bit. And I think this one sounds quite well-sourced, because I think there's quite a lot of details in Endgame that maybe you wouldn't necessarily have known unless you've been in the room. As You know, like the phone call from Charles came from a withheld number, and <laughs> yeah. she was wearing a black sheath dress, kind of things that you maybe wouldn't <laughs> know, <laughs> unless it was your own black sheath. On the ground. Yeah, quite. So I, I, I'm a little bit suspicious of, of Mr. Scobie. You know, doth protest too much, almost. Yeah. Um, yes. But I guess there aren't many people planning, like writing very nice things about them, are there? So I guess maybe they probably have cosied up and it's a nice sort of mutual triangle of convenience. I think also, I, I mean, I just get slightly concerned about how much money he's making out of, you know, these grubby little tales that he's telling out of school. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think it's a bit sad that, look, there are lots of things that we'd like to know about people's lives, but 
uh, when Harry and Meghan have complained about, you know, this insight into their lives, what I find so extraordinary, on one hand, I totally understand their wish and desire for privacy and how awful it must be to be pursued by the paparazzi and people making money in that way off your back without you having any say or control. I get that. But then on the other hand, to leak this stuff, you know, through courtiers and bits and pieces and, you know, it's all, mm. you know, all that business going on, I just think is, is really appalling and really... Well, to be fair, their own to on. be fair, the royal family have also been accused of leaking stuff through their courtiers and putting their stories there amongst the press. So it's not just Harry and Meghan who are well, accused actually, of doing it. Well, then, actually, since the, the attack, and since the attack on the royal family really began with Harry's memoir, what was it called again? I've even forgotten Spare. that. Spare. I don't understand the, why Endgame, what, is he predicting the end of the royal family? Or I don't know what Omis Scobie's up to there, but <laughs> Spare. Since Spare, actually, the royal family have mostly in terms of um, Charles and William, mostly maintained a pretty dignified silence in the face of, you know, horrible, barrage. horrible mm -hmm. criticism, yeah. a barrage of abuse, exactly. And actually, you, you know... You say a barrage of abuse, I say some, about, some truths have come but out. The thing about Meghan and Harry and the stuff that they're spewing is that, or it that is. they're revealing, is that it's about other people. It's invading the Queen's, you know, talking about the Queen's death. That's other people's dignity. Talking about Camilla and, and Charles, well, you know, just leave them alone. If they want to share all, fine. Well, exactly, it's up to them. I mean, I clearly, though, have missed a trick because uh, they say that kids ask the funniest questions. Well, obviously, I'm not a child anymore, sadly. Uh, Prince William was faced with a very awkward one yesterday, which I'm really annoyed that the other day, when I uh, name dropped, when I had the opportunity to meet him and we had a nice little chat, get to I, the didn't point, James. I didn't get ask to him. I didn't ask him this. Point, lad. <laughs> On a visit to Madison Moss side, an 11 year old boy asked William how much money was in his bank account. Ah. To which you reply, he doesn't know. I'm not sure who's who's like, more culpable here. That the boy for asking it, how petulant. I mean, how dare you ask that? Very rude. And then on the Very other hand, rude. William. I mean, doesn't everybody know? I'm not like asking you to answer the question, but I'm assuming you know at least roughly. Not maybe not to the penny, but you know how much money you got in your bank account. Yeah. Or in Esther's case, you keep telling me how much money you don't have in your bank account. I mean, it's just sad, isn't it? It is sad. We lent you know, we lend her a pen. We did lend her a pen. It. It's the first part of financial responsibility, isn't it? I mean, but it's, it's it, come on. It's poor manners to ask people about their finances. We know this. The British are notoriously, uh, you know, shy about revealing anything to do with our finances. But I also do find it, I, I thought, this is what, again, I'm not trying to just praise William here, but that's such an, a, a clever response. I don't know. Because if he said a lot, <laughs> well, that, that would be on the front page of every newspaper tomorrow. Oh, privileged uh, white royal male feels I mean, like he has a lot of money in his account. <laughs> Esther, you know? let's, let's not praise him too much. He's been trained his whole life on how to answer these kind of questions. It's, but so has it's, his brother. It's muscle memory. It's so, muscle ha, memory. so has his brother. And look at the And Harry was doing fine himself. until he decided to leave the royal family. Well, was well he nuts? But that, the thing is, but that highlights the fact that the royal family actually insulated him from all the gaffes he was capable of making. Because look at what <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. I think he made a, a, a few gaps in, his, in the royal family, like the Nazi uniform he wore. Yeah, that wasn't nice. Yeah, it wasn't great, was it? They spun it in such a brilliant way because he was the lovable ginger guy, and I'm just like, what? Stop bringing his hair color into it, Esther. But, but ginger wow. no, 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 no,